this is the definition of they're not like us. You don't let outsiders infiltrate in. They do nasty shit like this, and then it pits all of us together. This is why gatekeeping is important. If you were going to laugh at the joke, you started the shit. Stand on fucking business. Fuck them in their apology. The thoughts, views, and opinions expressed by Fat Liver Jones in this podcast do not necessarily reflect reality or facts. If you're seeking factual information, we strongly encourage you to do your own research. Much of what is said here is meant to be satirical and humorous. Enjoy the ride, but take everything with a grain of salt. You feel me? Back at it again, still potting on business. You know what time it is. These guys right here, I don't even know these guys. I know Andrew Schultz, Akash Singh, and Alex Media. Um, I don't know them personally, but a little quick backstory. So I know Andrew Schultz from the Brilliant Idiots podcast that he does with uh, Charlemagne the God. Used to be one of my favorite podcasts. Honestly, Brilliant Idiots, they've been fell off. I'll be honest with you. Schultz has uh, branched off and he has this thing where it's called Flagrant. Flagrant 2. It was initially supposed to be a sports podcast. Basically what came and Mace are doing, but uh, more of a frat boy style. Now, I don't know what it's converted into. I haven't listened to Flagrant in goddamn years but um so and these other two guys on the couch i don't know these guys but apparently they have some some huge podcast they're from across the pond it's called like shits and giggles or something like that but uh they were on schultz's podcast flagrant too and they made some jokes that were kind of inappropriate and here's the thing about it i don't think a lot of people are paying attention to is the fact that these guys won they not like us. You know, they claim they're part of this culture, but they're not really part of this culture. Two, they sat there and everything was fine, but now you want to make an apology because you're catching backlash. The reality of it, the joke actually wasn't, it was tacky. Cat Williams said it the best. He said, if you can't make a joke without offending people, then you're not really a good comedian. And I believe that. And like Schultz isn't a bad comedian. He definitely has some hacky jokes where it's like a lot of low hanging fruit, but it is what it is. Let's, uh, let's get into this shit and we'll break it down as we go along. Long. For the, the yeah, multicultural, yeah, really? yeah, black man. girlfriend effect. Yeah, yeah, came you're in, into that. Yeah, 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 yeah she came in. What's the black girlfriend? So. They just come in and start fighting. No. Okay, so what they're talking about is called the black girlfriend effect, I guess, which is like weird within itself. So it's like the, you're already stereotyping black women. It's kind of fucked up. Okay. Yeah, she just. Wait, she what, is the, what is the black girlfriend effect? This is oh, you just, just glow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend, all of a sudden he's got buzz cut, like yeah, clean he, shape up. Nah, he's too tall. Yeah, yeah. 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 glows yeah. up, bro. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Glows the fuck up. They shave their hair because they start losing it. Because it's so stressed being around this black girl complaining about shit all the fucking time. That's why. First hacky joke. Here we go. Oh, they got to shave their nah, hair. Nah, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow step, a beard they step because the there's up. more cushion when they get slapped the fuck out of them. <laughs> oh, shit. Now I see what everybody's really mad at. I mean, like I said, it was a hacky joke to begin with, but what he's basically saying is that all black women are violent or mean or aggressive, and everybody's cackling. Now everybody's laughing. They not like us. First of all, I don't know why you would be discussing what a black girlfriend effect is. That, like, shows, like, how out of touch you are. So this is the definition of they're not like us. All skin folk ain't your kin folk, and we be letting motherfuckers have a pass into our circle because I don't know. What the fuck? These guys, they're not even Americans. They are they live over there with the colonizers. Like, this is the craziest shit ever. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I, think, I think the black girlfriend effect, hmm. <laughs> It might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Protective. Yeah. Do you guys? Do you guys? Have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we love them all. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> the light skinned dude. He didn't know what the fuck to say. The other guy. Uh, he, he, this is just tacky. And y'all don't realize that they walked y'all into it and then Alex is up there being just as fucking ignorant, playing along with it. Because the reality of it is, like, jokes are jokes, but when you, like, are making them at the expense of, like, a group... Like, because I don't even like when people do, oh, white people do this. Like, I think those jokes are hacky. Like, this ain't the 90s no more. These hot takes are just, like, gross. <sighs> And then they walk you down the the, the, the damn long, long fucking <laughs> hall of, all right, which one did you love the, the most? Schultz is an asshole. Like, and everybody knows that if you know Schultz. And he does shit like this. But, you know, there's more to it. So we're going to just let this keep going. Oh, really? Yes. We love them all. Yeah. That means white. Yo, who gets nah. here? <laughs> that means white. Hey, let me just no. translation. Kendrick fans, <laughs> get him! <laughs> wow. We love them all. Hey, that's, yeah, that's royal English for white. <laughs> 
Schultz knew what he was doing with that whole Kendrick fans get him because he's literally walking them down like this dark hallway of trolls. And the reality of it is, is instead of them like being, you know what, like this one isn't going to fly, like the joke isn't hitting. Because, yeah, everybody could say what they would do right behind the scenes, but in the moment, this conversation would have never happened. It's corny. Like, that's not even the, the worst of it, right? So they have an apology video. See, my thing is, if you were going to laugh at the joke, stand on fucking business like for real just let motherfuckers know where you stand in the sand i'm not saying that i agree with it but what i'm saying is if you're going to do something and you know it's filmed when these cameras in your face you know it's on you can't just be like oh i'm caught up in the moment nah you got to stand on business and that's what i mean about they not like us because you know the people that this happened with it's all of the motherfuckers that are not black americans everybody else think it's funny to shit on black americans and because they share the same skin tone and they try to assimilate and we welcome them with arms and then act like we're the bad guys when we retaliate or when we say something back like fuck out of here so if you know you know if you don't that's fine um but we just wanted to address something that's happening at the minute Yep. This past weekend, uh, there's been a couple of clips going around uh, from when we did a session on the Flagrant podcast um, while we were on our US tour. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there were a few jokes made um, that were incredibly inappropriate. One specific, <laughs> bro. One See, now you want to talk about how incredibly, like, no, where was all this energy in the beginning? Where was this shit from, like, when you were on the set? Specifically pertaining to black and I ain't even getting into the professionalism side of how all of this shit worked, but when you realize like how this shit all played out, fuck them in their apology. And in the clip, um, Andrew was making a joke. Uh, I'm not even gonna get into specifics. No, making but you guys a, uh, like, started this frankly, fucking like, joke. You started it with the black girlfriend effect where you said- Wait, what is, the, what is the black girlfriend effect? This oh, is you just, you know, you just glow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see I, I, a guy who's had a black girlfriend, all of a sudden he's got buzz cut, like yeah. clean shape up. Nah, he's he's not, yeah. 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 Exactly. Y'all like like think it's stupid. Yes, I can say that. Racist joke. Yeah. And we were laughing at it. Mm -hmm. And to give laughing, there's, there's, was first key, of all, key. before we get into like specifics or anything like that, obviously there's just literally no excuse. There is no excuse. Agreed. Um and so what's the fucking excuse for? This is why gatekeeping is important. Because of this situation. You don't let outsiders infiltrate in because they do nasty shit like this, and then it pits all of us together. Because you got some motherfuckers who will sit on the side and be like, oh, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's like, no, it's a hacky ass joke. Fight or flight is a real thing. Like, it is, yeah. Fight oh, or flight is a real thing. And it's anxiety. so not easy to say, but when you're in those situations, you you look at it through a lens of like, bro, if it was me, I promise you I'll stand up, I'll kick them cameras down, yeah. I'll smack homeboy in the face. Yeah. Ain't nobody saying all that. You ain't got to do all that. Even if you chuckle, be like, yo, all right, that's not funny. Like, I see what you did, something. I get the anxiety part. You think these guys are cool as shit, so you're on their podcast hanging out with them key key, and now look what happened. They done walked you down the goddamn narrow hallway with your ass hanging out. Pause. That's crazy. Yeah. I'll say this, I'll do that. But when you're in there, you're in shock. You're in shock, and all you want to do is move on. Yeah, all you, bro, Literally, move on is the fucking do, word, bro. All like, you want to do is fucking move on. Just move on to the next thing. Yeah. Where was it? This light skinned nigga, I don't like him, yo. He got way too much energy for like right now. Where was this energy on set? Yeah. Just move on to the next thing. There's and so like many we had times. to say a few times, bro, just move on. Just move just on. Move on. So many the clip that everybody's mad about, y'all didn't say none of that shit. Or did y'all say that like internally? Hey, bruv, move the fuck on, bruv. <laughs> topics you were like move on move on move on and yeah it's not even like about pity laughs or anything but we just wanted to get, get out of that situation of, get, literally get out of that situation keep the ball rolling and we thought it was going to be more of like a a bros it was a fucking clan rally <laughs> <laughs> it's like nah it wasn't really a clan rally but like that's some frat boy shit the thing about like europeans is they think that they're like so much more educated but they don't really do their education on like groups of people if you're american you at least understand how each group of ethnicity or group of people whatever it is you understand how people react from the police all the way down to the goddamn the people in church like all these groups of people they all have a thing about them and if you know anything about american frat bros or the bros that are american white dudes they just say whatever they want because they're trying to push the limit to see how far they can fucking go before somebody punch them in their goddamn mouth and you know me i'm a firm believer that sometimes you gotta punch them off in the mouth y'all do what y'all want with that information yeah, yeah but just it, so, it ended yeah, up being something that ended up being be. something that's like really really hurt people that yeah. look 
to us for support and look mm. to us to feel protected and protected is the main no they don't they don't know y'all and listen and it's not to say uh, because here's the thing people need to draw a line in the sand because y'all think because you look like us you got the haircuts and all of that shit they not like us so to to act like you are walking around protecting our people like no you're not man you're from the home of the goddamn colonized we know how they give it up over there look what they did over here come on man like let's stop thing yeah that i wanted to discuss is that it is our duty to protect you guys facts um and who who the fuck y'all protecting don't make me odd man listen it is definitely not cool to be in that situation and again not be the ones to stand up and kick the cameras down and we fucked it on that occasion we did it's not going to happen again and it's about being human. It's about mm. realizing that you don't know what you're prepared for. You don't know how to prepare for something, something you don't know that you about. don't know yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. And one There's no way to prepare for being disrespectful to your own people. That's what we call cooning. Like with black American people in general go on TV or in front of a group of white people, they just perpetuate this image of how black people are and it's just disgusting. And it could go from tacky jokes to motherfuckers talking a certain way. Like if you come in the room and having a black scent or whatever, as they say, it's all of that shit. It is like, it is kind of disrespectful when you think about it because if we do that to any other culture, race, ethnicity out here, it's looked at as a hate crime. But because motherfuckers don't really respect black people like or well, black Americans, Americans like that, I want to say, because let's call it what it is. They don't respect us, and this is shit that we have to deal with. Punk motherfucker. Once this happened one time, you're like, fuck, all right. You learn from your mistakes, um, and that's literally, you that's learn, literally, you literally learn from your mistakes, Yeah, we man. fucked it, and we're like... We fucked it. Once again, I don't know who these guys are. Never listened to the podcast. I'd like to pride myself on being a podcast kind of so, but it's way too many podcasts out there to keep up with. So, no, I don't know these dudes. And I have, like, not a dog in a fight. When I saw the, the first video, that came across the timeline, and I saw it, and I said it then, I was like, this is a tacky-ass joke. Like, get this shit the fuck out of here. And then I saw the apology, and I was like, fuck them in their apology. You guys have a right to say what you want to kept something in or not. And everybody that does content knows that. All right, so this is Schultz and them basically reacting to this whole apology bullshit that these guys put out and um uh, they made some points i'm not gonna play the whole thing because it's like it's a it's a lot of shit they tried to defend like just joke making and all of that and how like if you're a content creator you're gonna say things that everybody's not gonna agree with so why try to kiss ass if that's not your thing blah 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 like they basically you know made fun of it and like i said i still stand on where i stand the joke was tacky and once again these guys started the whole conversation with the black girlfriend effect and now y'all want to cry uh we apologize when y'all threw the fucking grenade and then you watch the grenade explode and then once the grenade explodes you want to say oh my bad i didn't mean to do that have to prepare for something you don't know you don't know what's gonna happen yeah Yeah. once it's happened one time you're like first of all come on Schultz. y'all been in the game for a while alex media why is the goddamn shit feedbacking we shouldn't hear both of it y'all gotta do better man Pause, pause. You know what's mad funny about this? Is that they had shit that they asked to take out the episode. You know what they didn't ask to take out? Wow. That's what I'm saying. Everybody knows this. And when you're creating content, these conversations be just so explosive at times that you do get caught up in some shit. But when you throw a grenade and you, (laughs) like, watch it go off, you should be like, yo, you know what? We was kind of wilding a little bit. And it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. I mean, you you are still who you are, so it doesn't change anything. It's just your public perception isn't, like, really destroyed. I didn't know you guys, but I don't trust people anyway, so I don't really give a fuck about that. But the reality of this is you guys had a chance to pull it back and y'all didn't and y'all let it fly and now y'all being exposed for trying to cry foul they had shit their 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 producer whatever was like hey we really think that's inappropriate we like to take that out that's very uncomfortable their fight and flight instinct really kicked in after the power down but with that joke about the black women nothing Nothing really seemed, the fight or flight wasn't really there. I mean, they definitely looked like they were fucking laughing and joking. Even Schultz is like, dude, y'all had a chance to to have it removed. And I'm not taking Schultz aside. I'm just saying these guys had a chance to not even have this air. And they probably thought like, all right, you know, we'll go a little viral. This was probably all a rollout too. That's what I'm saying. Fuck their apology. Just, it shouldn't have happened. Your words. delivery was too good. I think Maybe it was. they were seduced by a delivery. Yeah. I like them. I, don't, I feel bad they're going through this, but you don't got to protect anybody that's what i would say 
I'm, I'm with him on that one. So if you say something and you stand on it, then stand on it. Don't walk the dog back and then try to say, oh, we didn't mean it like that. When you started the joke, everybody's blaming like Schultz for it because Schultz did fucking take it and, and run with it. And if you know Schultz, you know that's what he's going to do. So the shit was tacky overall. Schultz called him out on it. He said, y'all had the chance to pull this shit, but you didn't. Y'all personally, to y'all publicly, you don't got to pretend. Your people are equal. What are talking about? Okay, let's. All right, see, now I don't know what the fuck he mean by that. It's like your people are not equal, motherfucker. They not like us. The whole protecting of people is different. It's like you owe certain people the respect, especially if you consider yourself part of their culture. When people welcome you into their house, you are part of their guests. So as a guest, you should be respectful of the place that you are in. And when you come into a culture as a guest, you got to carry certain responsibilities if not more than the people that actually live here because we got our own issues anyway but here you come with the bullshit and now we got to sort it out and y'all go back to your home little land which is, this is probably a rollout like i said they didn't think that going this viral was going to be that crazy and look at it now you got the black lash listen to the end of the apology you learn from your mistakes um and that's true that's literally that's, that's literally, literally from your mistakes, yeah we man. fucked it and we're like we're, we're sorry we and you definitely, you definitely do apologize. It's, for me, like, it's one of them ones where you you don't realize that, like... This was the worst for part one, about it. You should have left When you're part life. of a community, you don't realize that you can hurt your own community. Mm. <laughs> Fuck out of here. When, so when, when you're not... Yeah, when, yeah. When, when unintentionally. Unintentionally, for real, and yeah. And also, on, on top of that, it was so crazy that, like, the narrative that's been spun about how we feel about our community... Mm. Ooh. The irony of the fact... It's not your community. They not like us. You motherfuckers are guest. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, motherfuckers think that they can dress like us. They can assimilate. And a lot of times, it is our fault because we just let motherfuckers walk up in our shit and be like, hey, we're friends, though. Everybody's cool. We love everybody. Blah, blah, blah. You can dance. You can dress like you're fly. You got to start gatekeeping some of this shit. Like, I'm sorry. I'll stand on that one. That, that hill I'll stand on. You started the shit, and now you got to deal with the blacklash. What the fuck is the black girlfriend effect? Told you. They're, they're fucking from the home of the colonizers, man. I don't know what else you want from me. We don't even got to play no more of this shit.